Hey guys, um, I'm actually, um, I got to upload a goddamn video and stuff, not because, um, I, it was one of the videos I was planning to do, but because, um, I messed up on the title. What if Deku had a Tell Beast, uh, quirk? I had the title as Tell Beast, bro, and literally nobody was gonna see that. So anyways, let me let me let me run y'all down real quick before we get into the video of how um we operating right now, right? I'm um I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to do the remaster for what if Deku was the only guy uh with a quirk. Also, other people wanted me to do a remaster of what if Deku had a flame quirk. Um so that's going to be coming soon. Let's see here. That that I also got a what if Deku had a snake quirk. You know, banana, I saw you. I didn't want to make this uh tell beast because I was thinking about it. And you know what sounds better than any other thing is a dragon tell beast. So we're taking something from something, but we're making it unique. That's what we do around here. Plus DK, baby. Now, nah, but for real, let's get into this video though. Enough of that. So the last video I did this um with the what if Deku had a uh tell beast quirk or whatever. I got cut off because somebody called me, so let's, like, leave off with that. This dude's like, hey, I'm becoming the number one hero. I'm going to do my thing. All that good stuff, right? So we end up getting our boy Deku, where after all this happens, he's just doing some more training and stuff. And I'm going to say, because there would be no reason for the tail beast to be malicious, um... I, I don't know how many tails it have. Me personally, I would say it just it just has tails, all right? I'm just gonna say this is a subcategory of all the quirks because it's um it has all the attributes. It's like um I'm gonna make it like if you know what nan is, I'm gonna make it to where it's like a unique category, and there's only nine or like so many people that have this said quirk, right? And it's not inherently genetic or anything, but it's like um like Nan, it's a specialist, right? So after we got done with the entry exam, everybody was so surprised on how strong Deku was, all this good jazz, right? So now, um, I'm gonna say your boy Deku's going around, he's doing his thing, he's, uh, you know, training and stuff, and we're gonna make it to where, because I love, you know, really pushing the story, so we're gonna make it to where a couple of things happen, right? One, Deku was off doing his own thing, which I'm going to say it was like a two-week grace period. I can make it up. What if? Creative liberties. Two-week grace period, right? So on the first part of this um, week or so, he's out and about, and he's like, hey, Deku. Well, hold on, hold on. I want to hit that deep voice, because this is how I think the tell B sounds. It'd be some like, <clears throat> Deku, you feel that presence too, don't you? So, okay, imagine anytime I, like, talk about the Tell Beast speaking, it's kind of that voice, all right? Like, it's a deep, booming voice. So, this dude was, um, he's lurking around. He's like, you know what? I feel that, too. Where is he? And then, so, Deku does the bunny hop, bunny hop, <laughs> fly. And then he eventually runs up on this dude. He's like, who you? He's like, who you? I'm the, about to be the number one hero, baby. And now you might be like, why is Deku like this? Blah, blah, blah. Well, it's not the fact that he's um insecure or overconfident, right? I'm going to say all his insecurities or anything, the tell beast is already kind of on this dude's neck. Like, bro, he's like, bro, look at this. And he's like replaying back memories of when he's tried to save people, when he tried to do this, when he tried to do that, all that good stuff. All right. So this is why Deku's like, all right, bet. So basically, he fully believes in himself 100%, no question, no hesitation. You know what I'm saying? So that's why he's got this confidence, all right? It's it's literally just confidence and not a Bakugo where you're deluded by your, you know, your false sense of um precedence or pecking order. Anyways, he basically runs up on Stain. Him and Stain have a conversation, and they come to blows. But Deku doesn't need to use the QB. Because I'm going to say he's able to use energy, all right? Now, in a couple of my what-ifs, I do have it to where he can use energy. But, I mean, I think it's justified here. So, and he's also pretty proficient with hand-to-hand -hand combat, okay? So, him and Stain are throwing some quality hands. And Deku's like, damn. Hey, bro, can you run me by that sword shit, dog? I mean, I prefer this. This is really just me, you know, um, 
putting on my influence, but I might prefer a bow staff or something because, you know, it's not lethal. And these here, we can't be heroes out here killing stuff, but, you know, that cool. He's like, shut up, tell beast. Damn, I'm trying to hold a conversation, my nigga. Damn. Anyways, so hey, hey, run me by that sword, bro. Cause I like how you do that. Especially that little move, right? Where you where you threw the sword up, you, you did the little look look, and then I looked up and you, you tried to stab me. But my weave game is too supreme. So so good try. If it was literally anyone else, I think you would have had my neck. Or if I didn't have a quirk. But no, nah, that, that was some solid. And, and stain is like so caught off guard by um deku's um calm relaxed confident like kind of vibe right he's just vibing right he's not like overdoing anything and shit so i'm gonna say that this helps stain become better and deku's like hey yo i got an idea he said grab hey yo have you killed anyone he's like huh what no bet <laughs> yeah and i'm off and i'm gonna say he's only able to do like a partial cloak since he's using you know his arm because he grabs him and he flies off and when he flies off he basically goes straight to ua he's like yo i'm in this piece and so he slithers through not really but he slithers through to the principal he's like listen the dude he got the handles but like he low-key could have been a villain but like since i'm so awesome with the sauce i took care of that he's not a villain no more he cool can you get him a job here and Nedsmo or the principal's like, what the hell? Huh? He's a little, you know, a little confused, a little baffled, a little stunned. And it's like, listen, here, here, here. I'll save you the trouble. He he grabbed uh stain by the dome piece, grabs his dome piece, but like it was like a um QB cloak that grabs him and then he grabbed Netsu. Let's share memories. And so it's like a transfer of memories and stuff. So they all have an understanding of one another. And it's like, see, now we all understand each other. Now let's use words and stuff like that, right? And that's who uh, was like, well, oh, uh, yeah. He might actually be able to help with uh some of our combat classes and also help out with this, this, and that. He's like, yay, I'm going to leave now. Goodbye. And, and he, he, he dips out. So... Yeah, um, the Tell Beast is kind of like my free liberty to do as I please with the, the uh, story in the sense of because a lot of times I want to introduce Stain or I want something to happen, but it's kind of like I feel like it's a little too forced. You know what I'm saying? Like I got to go out of my way to um get that narrative done, but y'all got it. So we're going to go ahead and um get to what a ne the next change that happens later on. Um, uh, they're doing some more training because Deku's trying to see how much of the power he's able to call out and uh, be able to use consistently, which that'll get into later. And he, he, he sees a dude getting bullied. Like, I don't even mean like light bullied or something. This dude's getting his stuff milly rock. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I had to make sure the video didn't stop. My phone fell. <laughs> he, <laughs> he's getting stomped out. And like, basically, he should have called for backup. Now he's not giving backup type of situation that we're, we're, we're dealing with. But but your boy Deku said, ooga booga. Smack, 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 smack. And it was like a one like a uh, one punch man S like smack. Just smack, 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 smack. Grabbed this dude by the dome piece. Looked at him. Looked at his memory. Now, why is this an ability? Plot convenience. Why? I mean, I mean, <clears throat> I'm just saying that, you know, the quirk, you know, and since he's able to utilize so many different functions and eh, more BS, more BS. But no, nah, I just think it helps out. So he's like, he looks through the dude and he do the talky talking. He's like, all right, yeah, you're going to come to UA with me, too. And thus, that would conclude the two weeks. Like that, that was it. I wanted Shinzo to be um in uh ua uh a uh, um a1 or basically the main class okay and i also wanted stain to be a teacher there so i was able to slither that into the story now let's get into the the fight scene don't really matter but i guess i can quickly run over wait did i already run no no that was the muscle video i did so the fight scene to be a hundred with you, my guy, it's kind of lackluster because, oh, wait, wait, 
Never mind. So we're going to say Deku's a lot more known and a lot more popular even when he was younger and stuff because he was always walking and training and using his quirk but being really strong now that I'm, I'm fully admitting that it's a dragon one. So people know of him. It's like that one boy with the unique quirk, blah, 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 or the specialized quirk. It's the rarest of rares. It's, it's not as OP as it sounds because other people will have it in the future parts. And so when we get to the point uh, when the fight's about to happen, it's actually teams are different. <laughs> we got Bakugo and Todoroki against Deku. And who will be the other person? Who will be the other person? Um, just Deku. Yeah. I'm going to say some of uh, the numbers were off or something, or there was some complication, or Shinzo uh, couldn't make it, or something. Not Shinzo, but like somebody couldn't make it, or they need to switch the teams around. Yeah, yes. So, you know what happens. Deku goes in deep, solo dolo, baby. So he's like, all right, bet. So he been, I'm, I'm, he's like, I've been dying to try this power out. So he uh he he uh his skin starts to peel off. And he's like, tell Beast, you're not gonna go crazy like you did the last time. He's like, no, I would never. He said, you better not. So basically, his skin completely gets you know mowed away, and like he's using like his second second to third give or take clo uh, cloak form, and he's like. It still have his human silhouette, but it's like a whole bunch of um untrained, almost looks untrained. Uh, tell beast, his uh hands where the uh QB energy and stuff is at has claws. It's more aggressive looking, and it's almost like you can see on his um a little bit. You can kind of see like scales and stuff. And Deku's like, <clears throat> but it'd be like a hollow noise. Um, if y'all have ever seen Bleach, all you hear is "Let's go!" And then he's like, "Pew pew." pew, pew. <sighs> and so what he does is he grabs uh both of them, Bakugo and Todoroki, and he like flings them away from the bomb, like grabs them away from the bomb, and like proceeds to fight. <clears throat> it gets in a stance. Bakugo and Todoroki look at each other. And I'm going to say, Deku is so scary that Todoroki really thinks he needs to use his flames, all right? And also, since he's using his flames, Bakugo said, I got an idea. Icy hot. Listen, I'm going uh, to need you to do... Basically, it was a plan they already made. But basically, the plan was burn Bakugo, make his explosions even hotter. Then when he gets hit with the knockback... He'll be able to uh icy hockey come through with his ice. So yeah. So with that being said, they do that. And then Deku apparently um gets blown in half. And everyone's like, no! And uh Bakugo Todoroki, really Bakugo, since he's he led the charge, is like, oh, 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 I thought, I thought he was stronger. And then Deku starts to regenerate but now before anyone gets like you know bugged out um tell beasts and stuff you have attributes of what the actual real life animal is he actually didn't get blown up per se it was just the fact that he was he he ducked into the cloak or into the protective energy so it looks like half of him will blow it up but he pops out <laughs> gotcha yeah, do you really think a weak attack like that's gonna kill me come on man you see how strong... Oh, yeah, I forgot you. I can't sense this energy. Hold up. I got you. Ha, ah, boom. And everyone, even All Might and Stain that's watching, can feel this presence. He's like, yeah, I forgot. I turned this off. I don't like to scare uh, people when I'm rescuing them. Hmm. He's like, yeah, I didn't really need this much. I just need to see what it was like. Hold up. Let me power down a little bit here. Ah. And when he powered down, it felt like he increased his power, but he really wasn't using the uh, the three-tailed uh, cloak form to its max. He was just testing it out, seeing how much control, because he has to have a mental fortitude to keep the energy in line or the energy might overcome him, right? And so when he powered up, and his, all this is is his um, variation of where he's using the chakra and stuff, right? 
So he's just using the energy. So this one I like better because it's uh his claws come out, his skin looks like yeah, it has scales, his face looks more dragon-ish or dragon-esque like. And he's like, let's try that again. Hmm. And but he's flaring up his immense power this time. Todoroki, Bakugo, they all basically try to release their best moves. And Deku's like weaving it, punches Bakugo. Gets behind Todoroki. Todoroki puts up ice blocks it just in time. Poo, poof. Gets his against the wall. Then we're going to switch over to Bakugo. He's like, I'm not giving up. And then so he does a hauser. Deku says, not this again. No. <clears throat> Projects energy at him. Blocks it or basically shoots it back. But uh, Todoroki was able to catch uh, Bakugo while also shooting at flames. Deku comes up behind Todoroki, but Deku moves so fast that he's able to hit Todoroki twice in the same motion. So it's like he gets kicked in the uh, uh, chin, but also gets kicked in the back of the head. Then uh, we switch back over to your boy, um, to your boy Kachan getting smaz smazzered right through the building. Or basically, dude's like <laughs> stuck. And dude... <sighs> He, he walks up to Todoroki, and Todoroki's like, wait, 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 because he was about to do an attack, but Deku just puts out his stin a full hand. He's like, tell Beast Punch. Since this dude flying, but not flying, but it, it was like, it looked like it didn't do much damage. He's like, all right. Mm. Yeah, I almost got a hang of this form completely. And so then, you know, Deku strolls along on his merry way. Strolls along on his merry way and touches the thing. GG's. <laughs> Good fight. And so that will be part two. It's a little bit longer than I intended to be. But I really wanted to get into that story. So I hope y'all enjoy. I hope y'all like. If y'all made it this far, thank you. And as I always not say, I love you.